Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! Hey everybody, Cappy here, and uh, it's good to be back. Maybe I'll maybe I'll do that with what was it? Iron Man? Oh, it's good to be back, cause I am back, and <laughs> come back, and everyone's like, dude, nice haircut. Uh, the girlfriend just gave me the haircut, just cleaned up the sides, and the hair is growing out longer. It is coming down to here. I'm gonna follow Chris Muir's lead. Um, he's like, well, who's that? Go to um, Day by Day cartoon. Look it up. And uh, I, he's kind of like an older fatherly figure I look up to. And he's like, dude, you got your hair. Grow it out long. I'm like, okay, okay. And so we're going to get, it's going to be long and lengthy. Uh, but yeah, this haircut is just the consequence of uh, me cleaning up and grow, well, I had to shave. Anyway, we're not, we're not here to talk about this shit. Let's, let's come on, let's get to work here. <clears throat> uh, anyway, so this is a video request, and as always, asshole consulting, blah, blah, blah. And I'll tell you the genius that no one else is going to fucking tell you. Uh, to where, and I have a video request below. In the past few weeks, I have came across a few articles and a few people who mentioned this on social media. The idea of using bitcoins rather than traditional paper currency issued by the government. Fearing that, or the idea that the government in the country for which I live in, more left-leaning policies will eventuate into what happened in Cyprus. That being the government confiscating a portion of its citizens' money to support itself. I want to know if you thought using bitcoin was a good idea, and if so, a brief overview of how and others like it work. Let's do the <coughs> overview of it and then we'll go into um, my opinions of it. All right. Every cryptocurrency, which is what a Bitcoin is, it falls under cryptocurrency, meaning cryptocurrency, uh, is basically a, a non-physical digital currency. And it has this big ass long code. I'm really dumbing it down. So all you fucking Bitcoin nerds don't fucking come in here and start get me like, well, technically. So it's got this big ass string of code. So it identifies it. And people are, quote, mining it so that there's effort and resources attached for, to it. If you don't understand it, that's all right. Don't worry about the But there's a reason, rhyme and reason for that. So uh, when all these Bitcoins are mined, uh, they there will only be 21 million in existence, and they can be divisible up to I don't know how many quintillions of decimals. So it's completely divisible. If you want to buy a five cent gumball in theory, and the gumball machine had the device to take Bitcoin, you could do that. Okay, uh, so you go and what you do is you buy Bitcoin either through a, in a well, through an exchange of some kind, like what Bit Exchange, or there's there's several of them out there. And, or you could buy them directly uh, from people and they could transfer. So you set up a Bitcoin account and then kind of like PayPal and then other people can transfer their Bitcoins to you or you can buy Bitcoin on a Bitcoin exchange like a stock exchange. So it's very similar like you have a brokerage account that allows you to buy stocks in a stock market. So you have a Bitcoin account that allows you to go to various Bitcoin markets on the internet, buy from there or directly from other people. <clears throat> so you can buy any increment that you want, a hundred dollars, ten cents, a billion dollars, whatever. You buy the Bitcoin. And that then allows you to go and buy other things that other people are selling uh, in terms of Bitcoin. You kind of see that on some websites that say we accept Bitcoin. Some taxi cab drivers accept Bitcoin. They have the um, PDA devices by which and software to take that. Uh, so that's it. And the, and the whole concept behind Bitcoin is that it is kind of the perfect currency. It cannot be inflated. You can't, there's only going to be 21 million Bitcoins in the history of the world. When the sun goes red giant and it starts to consume Mercury, Venus, and then, and, uh, I was going to say the United States to show how arrogant I was. What's that country? Uh, Earth, that's it. The one that we fucking own. The planet we own. The United States. Earth, a.k.a. Earth. <laughs> and, uh, and then it'll go away. So, uh, and obviously the reason for a Bitcoin or having a cryptocurrency is that it's more stable. It's not subject to central banks printing off more, which is which is what has happened. There's, there's damn good historical reason to have a cryptocurrency. 
and it's uh, and there are other benefits like you could you could tr it's it's universally accepted. There's no like you know yen. You typically got to spend that in Japan. Yuan you got to spend that over in um, in in uh, China. And the U.S. dollar you have to spend in the United States. So this is this trans transfer or, or transcends borders uh, as long as people accept it. So uh, obviously because of these qualities and traits. Uh, a lot of people, especially on the right or leaning and libertarian and conservative type, are saying, hey, this looks like a good store of value. Where if you're worried about a currency or you're worrying about government trying to confiscate um, your bank accounts, you would buy some of this and you have it stored on the interwebs and uh, the government can't confiscate it because it's anonymous. You can, you can use it. You don't, you know, like when you go into, whatever, say Mexico, you want to escape the United States. You can't just convert all your assets to cash, go into Mexico and say, hey, why do you got 2.5 million in cash? So this is, there's no, you don't carry anything through the border. It's digital. You got your access passcode and this horrendously long mnemonic device that you learn to, to log in. And then, uh, then you got your coins and hopefully people over in Mexico are accepting Bitcoin. So that's in theory. So Now, to address your specific questions, oh, there we go. Uh... Let's go through some of the, we know what it is very roughly, very generally. Uh, let's go and look at some of the pros of, of, and cons of Bitcoin as it pertains to your question. Right, so uh, the pros to Bitcoin, it's not traceable, not trackable. All right, so now if the uh, Cypri Cy Cypriot, Cypriot, the government of Cyprus comes after you, well, dude, here's my shitty Cyprus dollars, or whatever the fuck the currency is there. And here I have 200 Cyprus dollars in my account. You can take, you know, take them while the lion's share of your money is over in um, in Bitcoin, and then you go to whatever country it is and you convert it over there. It's not subject to inflation again because it's set at 21 million. Uh, it technically, in a very philosophical sense, it would then serve as a as a, as a as the perfect store of value. There are only 21 million bitcoins in the world forever. So you know that when you buy that, there aren't going to be inflated away. You can, and that, that can't even be said about gold or silver because you can always mine more gold and silver. And if that exceeds the rate of the population growth, then you can have inflation in gold and silver. That even happened. Interesting economic history lesson here. When Spain was conquering the new, the new world and grabbing up all that Aztec gold and bringing it back, it actually caused a recession because gold inflated so much. They brought back all this gold. You know, Spain's a little yay big, but South America is you know, huge. And so they brought back all this gold and silver, and it caused economic problems, inflation, and all that other stuff. So it, just because it's a precious metal like gold or silver does not mean it, it is not subject to inflation. So you have that, and ore is a good store of value. Uh, and in general, Bitcoin has become, and cryptocurrencies in general have become somewhat universally accepted. Like people kind of like, yeah, and I heard about that. I'm a little iffy, and but some people will take it. They say, yeah, I'll take Bitcoin. Me, I'll I'll take Bitcoin donations as well. So the key to a currency working is that it has to be universally accepted among other trades. And so you know, if, if you have this great perfect currency but no one accepts it well fuck it's not perfect currency it, it, it could be designed to be the perfect currency but it's like beta and VHS nobody wanted beta they wanted VHS so tough shit if beta was technically superior to VHS it was more commonly accepted um, by the people uh, but still there are some there's a fair amount of people that do accept Bitcoin so in in the case where you know can it be used as a store of value sort of what you're going to be really concerned and worried about is the ups and downs of the market price. It's it's horrendously volatile. Uh, what was it at 800 today? Um, well, let's take a look. What's what's Bitcoin price of Bitcoin? It was 800 a while ago. Let's take a look at the Bitcoin prices today. Bitcoin price. Yeah, look, it just keeps coming down. Well, come on here, people. Let's load up. Really? Honest to God. The chart I pulled up that I can't read the numbers. All right, here. It's at 250, 260. Okay, so that's how many dollars per Bitcoin is. So it's come down 25%. It's very volatile. <clears throat> that's the risk you're going to have with using Bitcoin as as a store of value. It's, it's volatility. So, the, you know, you could say, oh, God, the the Cyprus government is going to come in and take 50%. Well, all of a sudden you invest in Bitcoin and you lose 70%. Of 
because it is still a, a cryptocurrency in its in its infancy. So it's it, it's it's um, volatility is one kind of concern. But will it work? Like if you're trying to get out of the Soviet Union or Nazi uh, Germany and trying to you know anything will do now. You know you're willing to pay a premium. Yeah, you could convert it to Bitcoin. Now here's the problem though with Bitcoin. Couple of cons, right? One, it's inconvenient as fuck to use. I don't care what the Bitcoin nerds say, all right? I'm a pretty smart guy. I, I was somewhat savvy at it, like I knew it. I bought some, I set up the thing. And if you don't use it constantly, you're gonna, you're gonna lose it. And to go and constantly relearn how to use it is a pain in the ass. And that's another huge drawback. It's inconvenient as fuck to learn. You gotta set up a wallet, then you gotta get this mnemonic device, then you gotta get a passcode, then you gotta memorize the, the mnemonic device, then you gotta find somebody, and, then you, and, and, and these nerds, these IT nerds, which is brilliant, it's brilliant as fuck, don't get me wrong, Bitcoin is arguably one of the most, not arguably, one of, probably, not probably, the most interesting economic development in the history of economics, probably since... Oh, I'd say credit cards. I, it's an amazing, ama brilliant, brilliant IQ way over here. But the problem with these IT nerds is they don't realize that they go so far to the right of the bell curve that currency, remember, one of the uses, one of the, not the one uses, one of the vital, important, necessary components of a currency is that it's universally accepted, that, that the average commoner can use it. A credit card, anyone can use it. Swipe. Bitcoin? Fucking set up this, fucking set up that, da 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 da, da, da. fuck that. No one's, gets, it's, it's going to be used by nerds and economists like me. And only the Bitcoin nerds are going to be using it at, at, a, at a proficiency rate that it, that it serves as a functional currency. And I've frankly given up. I think I got, I got 1.2 Bitcoin, you know, that's that, because I want to buy, take a position of it. But I won't lie to you, I can't remember how to fucking access it. I just wasted $800. <laughs> And, and, okay, it was a learning experience. I, I intuitively understand it. But fuck if I know how to get my Bitcoin back. It, 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 I, that's, that's the problem. So if you're going to use it for a one-off transaction to escape a country and transfer the majority of your life in the form of wealth you've worked up and sacrificed your life for, yes, because you'll be, you'll be uh, proficient at it at that point in time. So you transfer it into Bitcoin. You get to whatever safe haven you're going. You retransfer it back into Singaporean dollars or whatever it is that you're using. But if you're just going to let it sit there over time and you're not constantly reminding yourself how to log the fuck in and what's the mnemonic device and what's the Bitcoin chain and all this other fucking inconvenient bullshit, forget it. You're going to you're gonna lose that money. So use it as a one-off and uh, stuff like that. Uh, the, another drawback of Bitcoin for more of a long-term perspective, not like a, a way to transfer money out of a, a tyrannical state, uh, is that there are other cryptocurrencies. There's, there's, I don't know, last I checked, half a dozen of them. And that's where the real risk of inflation comes in, is, is you're going to have competing cryptocurrencies. Like, all right, and, and, and all the drawbacks of, of Bitcoin applies to these things as well. It's like, fuck, I got to learn this, I got to learn that. Is How do I, you know, do you got to find somebody that accepts it? Um, so they can, in a sense, all inflate each other away. And it's kind of like looking at auto manufacturers, like, you know, if, if General Motors was the only car manufacturer in town, you'd use it. Okay, cool. Cars are really cool. But what if Toyota came in and, and, and flooded the market with Toyota cars and Nissan came in and Ford came in? Well, even though GM is a GM car and Ford is a Ford car and Nissan is a Nissan car, they're all cars. So they do, they would inflate and affect it. They are, they're going to. So that's that's the real risk of inflation with Bitcoin is anyone could come up with their own Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. Uh, and then finally, if, if you're looking at uh, Bitcoin in a long-term again, but post-apocalyptic world, all cryptocurrencies are fucked because in a post-apocalyptic world, guess what? There ain't no fucking internet. You're lucky if there's electricity. And because these are all digital and they live on the internet, once that internet goes bye-bye and there's no electricity, well, fuck, it's gone. So, I, the, truthfully, what I recommend, um, if you're worried about your money being confiscated in one country, simply move it out of another country. Or don't leave it in the bank. You can always buy silver, gold. I also prefer bullets and guns. Um, you can even look at copper. If, if you don't have a lot of money, copper is a great thing. I mean, I don't have any gold. I can't afford gold. I have some silver. 
and uh, some copper bars. Uncle Bernard, Bernard Chapin, he gave me some copper bars, little copper bars. Um, I think those are much simpler, have a better track record. They're not subject to like the other forms hyperinflating them away. Um, you know, so that, that's a good store of value. If you're if you're really worried about your country taking over and, and, and uh, giving a haircut to your bank account, pull the money out, save it in the local currency, get a safe. Um, if you're even worried more, convert that to a foreign currency, send that money to a friend overseas, have them hold it for you, something. I mean, th there's a lot easier, simpler ways to protect your money from a government grab uh, or nationalization than switching to Bitcoin. <laughs> it, it's just, I know Bitcoin, it, it, it's, uh, it, it's uh, well, here's a perfect, this is a, a perfect analogy. I'm surprised I hadn't thought of this earlier. <clears throat> When there was the space race, I'm sure some of you may have heard this, you know, the United States and the Soviets were trying to put a man on the moon. And NASA had a problem with pens, you know, regular old pen like this, because this operates on gravity. It, it, it's a liquid that comes down, and as the ballpoint rolls, gravity is pulls the ink down and goes on the paper. That's a problem when there's no gravity, <laughs> because these don't work. So the government spent Lord knows how much. NASA spent millions, I think it was. We, you can look it up. Trying to figure out to develop a pen that would write in zero gravity. You know what the Soviets did? They used a pencil. And that's kind of the, the thing. The, Bitcoin is this over-engineered currency. This, uh, it's brilliant. I mean, no doubt the pen that NASA came up with was brilliant. But it's over-engineered as a tool when there's much simpler stuff, silver, gold, um, buying other currencies from it. It's just simpler for the average person uh, than the time that you're going to waste trying to figure out and dick around with Bitcoin. So if, if it was easier, yeah, I'd recommend Bitcoin. And you know what? You, I, I'm not advising not to invest. I like Bitcoin. I, that's why I bought one. You know, Lord knows I'll have to figure it out how to get it back. But I think Bitcoin has a has a great potential to move upwards, um, but I really, I mean, that is like my lottery ticket. Um, and I, plus, I do think it's cool. I think Bitcoin is cool, so I do have a little bit of a position in Bitcoin. But if you're worried about your assets being confiscated and your wealth and your entire life that you slaved away to work up for being confiscated to go pay some worthless fucking losers and parasites of society to vote Labor or Democrat, yeah, then, then you got to... There are other easier Soviet pencil type tools that will do just as well, if not a better job. So anyway, hope that answered your question about Bitcoin. Best of luck to all of you. And if you guys have a question, always go to assholeconsulting.com, send it to me, along with your money. The money is what I want. You do it for free? No, do I look like a nice guy who does shit for free? Anyway, best of luck. Toodles.